So it's my pleasure to introduce our speaker today, Rachel Sanchez. Rachel, Rachel is a second generation owner of Prestige Maintenance USA. They provide commercial janitorial services to over 400 facilities in 16 states and to many Fortune 500 clients. Today, she's gonna to talk about, we all have a secret recipe, what's yours? Um, and if you remember, we attended and attended our event back in March, an International Women's Day. We had a female leader speaker come in and a panel, panel in fact, and it was a great event. It was led by our director of operations, Andrew Gardner, um, and we had a great feedback for that. So we thought we wanted to highlight another female leader and entrepreneur, and that's our speaker today, Rachel Sanchez. She's gonna talk a few minutes, and then we're gonna do a Q&A, and let you guys, I'm gonna ask some questions, we're gonna talk about some things, and then we'll let you ask some questions too. Thank you, Rachel. All right, thank you, Greg. All right, good morning, everybody. I gotta tell you, my favorite place to be is in a room full of driven, powerful business people at 8 a.m. Um, do I have any CPAs in the house? Okay, a couple. So I have to tell you a funny story. So when um, Greg asked me to do this, then I started seeing the communications come out. And so I forwarded that to my mom and I said, hey, Greg asked me to speak at this event. And so I think I saw her a couple days later and she said, hey, so CPAs are gonna earn credit by listening to you? And I was like, what? Because apparently I didn't even read the full thing. Um, so this is what I can guarantee you CPAs in the house. This will be the easiest CPE credit you've ever earned by listening to me speak this morning. Um, so Greg shared a little bit about my business. I'm gonna share a little bit more about my background. Um, my I am a second generation business owner. My parents started our commercial cleaning business in 1976 in McKinney, Texas. And our first retail client was the Walmart store in McKinney off of Highway 380, if any of you guys are familiar with McKinney. Um, and so my childhood was um, my parents would bring my brother and I to the, with them to the job sites. Um, child labor laws were a little bit different back then, um, but it was very common for us as young kids to go with them. And in fact, the store manager at the Walmart store, he knew us by name and he would tell us, you can play with anything in the store, just make sure you put it back where you found it. So I bet you can imagine, it was two young kids locked in a Walmart store overnight. Uh, not a movie, I swear it was my life. And I think it was like probably middle school when I started finding out, okay, like not every kid has slept in a Walmart store. Um, but so what would happen is we would play and then it was, I don't know, probably 9.30 or 10, my mom would scoop us up wherever we were in that store and um, bring us over to the shoe department and she had made a pallet for us and we would sleep until my, fin my parents would finish cleaning the store. Uh, morning came around, they were done cleaning that big old store and um, they would wake us up and then we would drive home. We lived in Howell, Texas at the time. Uh, anybody familiar with Howell? Yeah, I used to ask people and they had no idea. So it's kind of cool that at least a couple people know. So we would drive home to Howell and we would um, get ready for school and go to school. And that was a routine when I was really young. Um, what I can tell you is as soon as we were old enough to push the broom, pull the trash, that's exactly what my brother and I were doing. So we, I learned the business from the front lines and that has really been priceless for me. Um, this year we celebrate 47 years in business and the values and work ethic that my parents taught us, founded the business on, they are woven throughout the fabric of who we are as an organization. So, um, you know, we're in all, like holiday time. If you guys go into big box retail stores, that's a lot of what we clean. Um, we also do commercial campuses, manufacturing facilities. But I think it's really cool this time of year because it's such a busy time of year and lots of shoppers. And so if you go into a store and you notice it's such a great shopping experience, there is a custodial team and many of our custodians across the country are making that a great shopping experience. Um, so I guess you could say growing up around retail, growing up in a store, 
servicing retail clients, retail's a little bit in my blood. And so I also had a dream of opening my own retail store. Not a big box store, but more of a specialty type store. So two years ago, I made that dream a reality and opened at Marie Gregory Boutique in downtown McKinney. And that has really fed my passion for fashion. Um, for those of you that are shoppers, come check us out. We were voted best of McKinney this year. So super excited about that venture. And for me, I'm a second generation business owner. I love what my parents have started. I've been able to work with my brother and take it to the next level. But I wanted to have the opportunity to start a business from scratch. And that has also been a great learning experience. All right, so that's a little bit about my background. Um, but today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share a recipe with you guys. So I hope y'all are in the mood for some cooking. Um, this recipe is really my go-to and how I try to approach uh, my business life, my personal life. All right, so show of hands, do I have any cooks, anybody that loves to cook? All right, awesome. Okay, do I have people that cook but they like to use a recipe? Yeah, y'all are my people. <laughs> I need a recipe. Um, okay, so I'm Italian, and you might not know that by my name, but I am. And so I'm going to share with you one of the best classic Italian dishes. Anybody know what we might be whipping up? Lasagna. You got it. Lasagna. I heard it somewhere. We are whipping up some lasagna. Um, okay, so to make a great lasagna, there's a lot of ingredients. But we're just going to talk about the main five ingredients. And so I'm going to need you all to help me out a little bit as we build this dish. Okay, so the first ingredient is at the foundation of the dish. It adds the layers. Um, without this ingredient, we wouldn't even be calling the dish lasagna. So anybody know what ingredient that is? Yep, it is the noodles. Gotta have the noodles for our lasagna dish. And so for me, the noodles represent my family. It's a key ingredient. I'm gonna guess that it's a key ingredient for most of you here in the room today. And um, so you can see here on the slide, I've got, I've got my noodles here. Um, I'm married, about to celebrate 20 years. My husband's actually came today. I think this might be the first time he's heard me speak. Um, and we've got a 13 year old son, great, teen live in the teenage life. Um, Diego and then we've got our two crazy dogs um, our golden doodle actually had his third birthday this week and I think he needs more attention in the house than anybody um, but this dish we've got layers right and so I'm in a family business that definitely brings a dynamic to the family um, here there's a picture of my parents and my brother um, that is at a business conference um, earlier this year and I get a lot of questions, and Greg's probably, um, I know he's going to ask me some questions about family business um, and how that works. And um, I think because I was raised in the business, it is just, it's very natural for us. Um, I can tell you being in business for 47 years, there have been a lot of peaks and valleys. And looking back on those, um, especially the valleys um, that we have went through as an organization, I am really grateful that I've been able to have my family to go through that with. Um, I'm not sure that how it would be if, it, if I wasn't going through that with my family. So um, now that we've got the foundation of the dish, the noodles, my family, um, let's add another ingredient. Okay, so this ingredient is one that really surrounds the dish, um, and I just think it adds some good spice to it. If we didn't have it, it would be just dry and tasteless. Anybody know what the second ingredient is? Sauce. Sauce. I heard it. It's the sauce. We got some sauce here. Okay, so for me, the sauce is my community, and we all have a community. Um, it's my friends, it's my neighborhood, it's the school district that we're in. Um, and a big part of my community is my business associations and organization. Um, you guys are here today with the Hex Financial Group. Thank you for letting me be a part of this community. Um, and so I think that we are so fortunate to be in the Dallas area 
because if you want to plug in professionally, there are so many ways to do that. Um, I love being around women in business. And so two organizations that I'm really passionate about are the Women's Business Council Southwest and the Women's Presidents Organization. So I spend a lot of time, um, you know, being involved with those. Um, it's been, for me, it's been a way to grow professionally and personally. So I think the most important thing about community, and especially if you're a business owner, is just knowing that you do not have to go it alone. Um, so I would say just sprinkle in, stir in plenty of sauce and, um, and think about the community that you wanna create. Okay, next ingredient, we're moving them right along. Um, okay, so this ingredient is not always, I guess some people don't add it to their lasagna, which is kind of um, strange to me, but um, I would say this can make it a little bit more unique and um, just gives it more authenticity. Does anybody know what ingredient it might be? And it has a smooth texture, creamy texture to it. Yeah, it's the ricotta. Okay, so the ricotta. So the ricotta for me represents uh, stepping outside my comfort zone. And it's important for me to step outside my comfort zone because that's when I have the most growth. And um, today is an example of that. Who loves public speaking? Got some, <laughs> all right, I've got one. I've actually heard Michael public speak. He's very good at it. Um, yeah, not my thing. <laughs> I've presented this one time before. Um, but I'm definitely not, not a huge fan of public speaking. So I would say when Greg asked me to do this, I'm like, Greg's a really awesome guy. So I'm like, if Greg thinks I can do it, this is gonna be a good opportunity. So I'm gonna do it and I'm glad I'm doing it. Um, you know, there's a saying by Ray Kroc and um, Dirk Nowitzki actually quoted this in his recent Hall of Fame acceptance speech. And if y'all have not watched that, I would highly recommend that you do. Um, but the saying is to be green, when you're green, you're growing, and when you're ripe, you rot. And so if we're just constantly doing things the same, we're not looking for different ways to do things, we're gonna rot. And I don't know, you guys don't look like the kind of people that wanna rot, so I know that I'm not. Um, I've got some pictures here on the screen of a couple of other examples of me pushing myself outside my comfort zone. Anybody remember Kathy Ireland? No Kathy Ireland, supermodel? Yeah. Um, so in, this was, I think, six years ago. We were approached um, to be on the worldwide business show that Kathy Ireland hosted. And that opportunity came about. And we're like, that sounds really cool. Um, and so we said yes to that. But I gotta tell you, I was definitely nervous. It was definitely a push outside my comfort zone. It was the real deal. We were at CBS Studios outside of Hollywood. There were lights, camera, action, green room, the whole nine yards. And um, I was really nervous. I gotta tell you though, as soon as I met Kathy, she just has a way with people and she definitely put me at ease. Um, so I'm so glad that's my brother there with me. And I'm glad that I was able to have that experience. It was definitely a growing experience for me and something I'll always really cherish as um, just a great opportunity. Okay, the picture on the right, anybody here familiar with Angels Landing at Zion National Park? Heard of it? Okay. So we are a big fan of national parks. In fact, um, we are trying to see as many national parks as we can bring my son to before he graduates. So I think we just completed 25 or 25 national parks we've done. So I think this was last summer, we went to Utah and did the Mighty Five. So the Mighty Five, the five national parks in Utah, we started at Arches and we worked our way um, west and we ended with Zion. We, like my idea of hiking is like two, two and a half mile round trip, um, not a lot of elevation gain, that's a good day. Well, we went with another family and our friends are very adventurous. And um, be right before we had left, he said, hey, I got a permit to hike Angel's Landing. You guys wanna do it? 
And I looked at it and I was like, nope, <laughs> not at all. I'm good, I'm out. And um, so Angel's Landing is one of the deadliest hikes in the US. And it's five miles round trip, so it's not like super, super long, but the last part, the summiting, is um, pretty intense. And there's cables that you have to use to get to the top of it. Um, the reason why I think it's the mo one of the most deadliest is because it got so overcrowded, it was very popular, and so a lot of times there were too many people on it. And um, there's parts of it that you're literally like, it's like this wide, and then it's just straight down, right? So um, as the week went, went on and we went to each park, we started doing, we were hiking, and so I was like feeling pretty good and like, hmm, maybe I should try that. So then I go on YouTube and then I start watching videos and watching other people do it. I'm like, oh, like they seem like normal people. I can do this. So then I decide I'm not gonna say I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna go to a certain point. They have like a landing. I can't remember what it's called, but you can go up to that and then go back. So I was like, I'm gonna do that and then we'll see um, how I feel. And so we did that, we got to that point. And so I was, I was standing there and it was this decision point. Are, we gonna, are you gonna summit it or are you not? And so I decided to, and my husband and the other couple we with, were with, I think their eyes were like, really? <laughs> You're going to, okay, let's do this. And so we did it. And um, the feeling of that accomplishment was really awesome. So just there's all kinds of ways we can push ourselves outside our comfort zone and just feel really good about, you know what, we can accomplish I think a lot more than sometimes we give ourselves credit for. Some of you might be pushing yourself outside your comfort zone today if there's any introverts in the house. Um, the thought of coming and networking with other people might really be a push for you. So I just think there's all kinds of different ways um, that we can do that. All right, we are on to our final ingredient. Okay, so this ingredient is one that brings real strength to the dish. It is one that you have to cook it down enough so that you still have toughness, but it's a balanced toughness. And um, it's one that honestly, you know, some people choose to lose, leave it out. Sometimes I wish I didn't have to have it in the dish, but um, anybody know what our final ingredient might be? Yep, the meat. It is the meat. Oh, sorry, I missed one. Okay, anyway, we're gonna keep on rolling. Um, so the meat for me represents resilience. And um, being a business owner, and just I think being in business today, you know, it's, it's something that we have to um, activate at different times. And I was reflecting back on when I've had to activate the resilience ingredient and wanted, chose to, to share a story with you guys about um, when I had to use this ingredient. Um, so it was March 2020 and the whole world started to shut down. Um, at the time we were cleaning hundreds of locations across the country and um, and then things started to, to stop. Um, we, our second largest client at the time called us and told us they had to shut their doors and they weren't sure when they were gonna reopen. For that one client, we were in 14 states. We had over 800 employees supporting that one client. We um, immediately furloughed all those 800 employees and um, we hoped that, that that was gonna be short term, but with all the different jurisdictions we were in, it was the shutdown was really starting to linger. And we started to get really anxious because we had over two months of receivables outstanding with that client. So we were desperate to get cash into the business um, we went to the client and we did something we had never done before and we offered them a 40% discount on that receivable. The generous offer went up to the CFO 
and it was almost immediately turned down. And then we knew we were never going to see that money. So it was really bleak. It was really dismal. Um, we had to fast forward two months. That client went bankrupt. So we had to lay off the 800 employees. We never got the money. Um, and it was the second time only that I've had where I thought, oh my gosh, this business may not survive. And at that time, we were in business for 44 years, I think it was. And just the thought of having my parents' business that they started and had a vision for failing, um, it was just the most awful feeling. So. It was one of those points where it was like, okay, well, what are we gonna do? And so we decided we have to focus on things we can control there, because there were some things we could control. Um, thankfully, we did have other clients and we were um, performing services every single day for those other clients. We had custodians going in, like providing very consistent service in what was a very uncertain time, um, custodians being even afraid at that time to go into public spaces. And so we've put focus on our custodians and how can we take care of them? What can we provide to make them feel safe on the job and show them that they're appreciated and valued? And also val value our clients that we were providing services to. So that was a major focus for us. Um, the other thing we did simultaneously is um, go through the profit and loss statement line by line. I'd learned so much about my business and drilled down on every single expense that we had in the company and then made decisions on what can we cut that's not going to sacrifice our employee and our client experience. And we immediately started cutting where we could cut. And then one of the other things we did is as a team, we stayed really connected and um, just stayed in constant communication and worked collaboratively. And I gotta tell you, we're here today. We're celebrating 47 years of business. Um, it was not a fun experience. I never wanna relive those days again, but I am really proud of our team because we did survive that, that experience. Um, pictures on the slide here, you guys can probably remember, like this picture is, you know, we were going back to the office and we're definitely a group that gets together a lot. We call it, we have a hub, like, so there's constant, like, let's meet in the hub, let's meet in the hub. Well, we couldn't meet in the hub, so we would go outside and we would spread out and we would still have, um, you know, meetings and get togethers that way. And then these pictures of us with the ponchos, um, so I think it was maybe a year later, we were so excited. If y'all remember like when conferences started happening again, it was like, oh my God, you know, and like conferences were full because people were like, we're so ready to go to a conference. So we had our industry conference in Chicago and it was our first time for us to be like at a conference together as a group. And so my brother, he actually, he's based in Chicago. And he planned this whole day before the conference for us in downtown Chicago and booked an architectural boat tour and we're gonna have fun as a team. And he was so excited. He put so much effort into it. It was a total crap day in Chicago. <laughs> and it was raining and he almost was like, let's not go on the boat tour. And we're like, no, let's go on the boat tour. And so we got our ponchos and we went on the boat tour and um, we laughed a lot and we had such a great time. And so uh, just for me, those pictures represent us weathering that storm together. And um, I'm really thankful for that. So I know you guys have had to activate the resilience ingredient. Um, you know, it's, it's tough when you have to do it, but I think that um, everyone has it in them to do that. So, all right, well, um, I did miss one of my ingredients, and that is, I don't want to miss it because I do think it's really important. So 
The last ingredient is one that to me, it's the really good stuff. It's the part that once you have it, it you just want more of that. Um, and it just keeps on, it just keeps on giving and it really tops off the dish. Oh, you saw it. It's just, where did it go? This one, the mozzarella. Yeah, so the mozzarella is, um, represents positive mindset to me. Um, you know, we live in a challenging time and it can be really easy to lose a positive mindset. Um, I think one of the most challenging times um, to keep your mindset positive is when you or a loved one's going through a health situation. I recently had lunch with a friend and her husband has ongoing health issues, but I gotta tell you, every time I see her, she's so positive. And so I asked her, how do you stay that way? And she shared with me a few things, and I think they're just good for everybody. You know, she said support of friends, asking for help when you need it, um, and then surrounding yourself with positive people. I can tell in the room today, there's a lot of that. And then taking time to do things that you really enjoy doing. Um, I've got pictures here. Um, I love getting a great Manny. So that's me with my niece getting a Manny. I love being outside. This was at a national park. Um, I can tell you yesterday I had a little bit, I was in a little funk and I was like, let me get outside and be in the sunshine. Just a little bit of vitamin D can really do um, powerful things for you. And then um, positive people, that's Justin, actually my business partner with my boutique. Um, so I think just mindset is so important. Um, it's very, very powerful. So, and you have to be intentional a lot of times about maintaining a positive mindset. All right, guys, so we have whipped up an awesome dish. We've got our noodles, represents my family, our sauce, great community. You guys are part of a great community being here today. We've got the ricotta cheese stepping outside your comfort zone. We've got, I think the mozzarella's down here, our positive mindset and then our ground beef um, resilience. So that is my secret recipe. I, I know that every one of you has a secret recipe as well. So I enjoyed sharing that with you today. I know Greg, you're gonna. Yeah, um, a few more questions. Yeah. Um, we have talked about uh, having a seat. And yes. Asking questions. And one of the things that, that we talked to Rachel about was just how do you juggle being a wife, a um, mom, and a CEO, you know, yeah. and all work. I know you have a teenager, and mm -hmm. you expressed to me about you guys going to all the parks and planning yeah. and that kind of stuff, but tell us about how you juggle it all. I think it's picking and choosing. Um, and I feel like there's, I don't have um, an expectation on balance. I think that some days are more focused on business, some days are more focused on personal time family time. Um, so I think just picking and choosing and there even something came up tomorrow where I'm supposed to be at a board meeting, but yet I need to be there for my son when he gets home. And I said, Hey, I'm going to have to do this one virtually, which is really unlike me. And I've just started to learn, like I have to sometimes have those boundaries. Sure. When you were working in the Walmart store at night or sleeping in the Walmart, did you ever dream that you'd be the CEO? No, I didn't, but I do have to tell you. Um, so when I got to be more of a teenager, we had a lot of co commercial office accounts in Richardson, actually. And I, my brother and I would go, just the two of us, and we would clean those offices. And so I would think, I would go into you know the CEO's office, right? And I'm cleaning, they have like all this like nice, I'm like, oh, it's a big office. They got windows and, and I did, think one day I want to have an office like this, you know? And so I had that, I could see myself sitting in an office, having the windows. I do have that now. Um, but I'm not sure that I was like, oh, I'm going to be CEO. But apparently because I thought I was going to have the big office with the windows. <laughs> well, I know that um, when we um, first got a chance to interview and talk to them about doing their financial and tax work, um, I got to meet the whole family. Um, I got interviewed by everybody. Um, one big group. 
Yeah. Tell us a little bit about the multi-generational aspect of running a business with parents yeah. who started it in their view versus today and, yeah. and your brother. I mean, you guys have the whole crews involved. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think that, so it's so interesting to me because my parents, they had that vision like when it was nothing, right? Like they started with a few accounts in McKinney and when they started the business, um, one, they named it Prestige Maintenance. They didn't name it like Big Al and Marie's Cleaning Service. They really wanted it to be a professional company in what I think is seen as kind of an unprofessional industry. Um, so I think because they had that vision and they wanted my brother and I to grow up in the business and they showed us that from you know such an early time it it came naturally um, we learned like you know from my parents and the one thing you know that I do think is a challenge when it comes to how we learned in the business is that's been my entire career so I in our industry family owned businesses seem to be somewhat common and um, I've met third generation fourth there's actually I'm going to a conference next week there's a fifth generation which blows my mind and it seems to be kind of a common thread with them that a lot of times the second gen whatever generation right um, goes out and has a career somebody else and then brings that back that's not the experience I had and so sometimes I think oh would it have been better if I did that um, I don't know because I feel like I've had so many learnings in my family business that I'm like, oh, sometimes I wish I would have failed somewhere else <laughs> and then brought those learnings back. Yeah. 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 Um, it appears to me that you're probably a female in a more male oriented and operational business. What's it like to be in that world, to be the female that's, that's uh, you know, yeah. coming into whether it's dealing with a new client or dealing with the employees and that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. it's, it's a different thought process. Yeah, and thankfully I see it change, like, I see it getting better. Um, so I can remember my first kind of big client meeting at a large headquarters uh, for a Fortune 100 company that we service, and I was like early 20s and it was they brought all the vendors in and i was the only female on the vendor side thankfully our client has always been a leader when it comes to women in leadership and the women were actually leading that meeting on the client side which was cool um so i've had the opportunity to see it for many years with our clients but on in my industry i've not i am seeing that change um I would say a lot of times for me it's like anything that's going to hold me back is me right of my mindset and am I going to let that get in the way or oh I or maybe I shouldn't be here because I'm, I'm the only female it's more like self-doubt um, I think than than anything when it comes to that but I'm excited because I actually really see it changing when I go to my industry events um, when we're at you know events where it's like all vendors, I was at an all vendor um, event for a client a couple weeks ago, and there were so many women, and I was like, this is awesome. That's great. Yeah. So, what would you tell your son, your nieces, nephews about you know, your thoughts about what they should be thinking about in the future? Yeah, um, I want them to pursue their dreams, um, what makes them happy. I think it's so important important to start creating a network um, what is it your network is your net worth um, I think that the network is huge and you like that starts really young um, you know the people you surround yourself with um, how you engage things like that I think are just super important for everybody and you can't I mean I think even as a young person starting that is really important um, what, looking back, would you, advice would you have given your 25 year old self when you were there? Yeah, probably to be more fearless, take more risks, like you can do this. Mm -hmm. um, I think because I did grow up in the business, um, 
I had some just like confidence issues of, um, I don't know, just, yeah, just more, just be more confident, more fearless. Yeah. Is that the same thing you tell the next generation of leaders? Mm -hmm. Is that the same thing? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I mean, I feel like, it, you know, when people say, oh, if you could have any superpower, what would it be? Like, it's super easy for me. I'm like, fearlessness, you know? If you can, like, be fearless, you can do anything. So in your career with Prestige, where do you want to take it? What do you want to do with it? So we're focused on growth. Um, we're heavily into retail. And so really expanding. We, we provide service in other verticals as well. Um, but really have a focus on expanding to some of those other verticals, really including more commercial campuses, uh, manufacturing, distribution centers, things like that. Um, we have always had organic growth, so I really see the future being um, growth through acquisition as well and exploring that so that we can get into those other verticals. Um, and then for, it's really important for us to stay true to our, our founding core values um, as we continue to grow. We have a real focus on employees and client experience. So making sure that that, that growth strategy also just really encompasses who we are as an organization. Awesome. Questions? Come back. This is a, kind of a technical question, so Greg can probably help you. But how, how, does, how does the Spumoni ice cream fit into all this? Uh, right? I know, we didn't get to dessert. <laughs> the best dessert ever. <laughs> I love it. Other questions? Yes. Um, so congratulations on starting your own company. Um, Thank you. And I guess you've added being an entrepreneur now to your, to your resume, but uh, what's the difference to you and kind of your perspective between running a small company now and versus running a large one? And what are the, what are the, big, what are the challenges that you, that you see? Oh gosh, they're so different yeah. um, because I feel like my boutique is a really fun business. Um, the clientele is extremely different, right? So Prestige, I'm dealing with Fortune 100 clients. Uh, my boutique, it's, you know, the consumer. Um, but I got to tell you, like the structure and things that I've learned from running a large business, I'm taking that because I think when you're in a small business, um, and my mom says this too, and it's so smart, is whatever it is, like, like do things as if it's a $100 million company. You know, like try and set it up to where it is you can scale it. And I've tried to take all of that and bring that to the small business side as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, the boutique is really fun and I love interacting directly with um, the consumer when I'm there. Like, I'm not there a whole lot. I have a business partner that runs it. But like Saturday, there's a wine walk and I'm like, oh, I wanna go do the wine walk. It'll be fun. <laughs> How many employees do you all have? So we have about 1,100. Okay. Yep. Okay. And you're in how many states? 16. Yeah. So one of the things we've done, um, and it's really been good for us, is we used to be in a lot more states. And we have um, strategically went through and identified areas to, um, to get out of just because it didn't make sense from an overhead standpoint. We had, you know, like we were in North Dakota and South Dakota and Wyoming as of a few months ago. So when um, our RFP rolls around, um, we've taken advantage of some of those to go like, we really shouldn't be operating in these states because it's increasing our overhead. And so this is the lowest amount of states we've been in in a long time but our top line has gone up. Um, so that's something we're trying to be really strategic about. We want to focus growth in Texas. Um, there's so much great business here. Uh, so, yeah. Did you have one question? Having gone through the, the challenges of the, the, the pandemic, what are you doing after having that, well, I'll call it learning experience, What are you doing now to plan for the, if there's another one? I mean, 
are there some things that you're doing internally? Say, okay, we were we we had two months of, of receivables, and you know what what would you what are yeah. you doing those things? Well, one of the things we did, and probably a lot of you guys did it as well, is because um, I felt like we were we were like creating policy and things on the fly, right? So we created like a playbook, pandemic playbook, um, because we learned so much through that time. And then the diversification, so is really critical to that, that we're working towards, because that client was our second largest client. It, it made, but it made up, uh, the concentration of it was, was significant. So I think diversification of clients is also really important as we're planning for, you know, if that happens again. Yeah. Yes, I have two questions for you. Number one, how did you manage the transition between your parents running the business to you and your brother running the business? Mm -hmm. <laughs> he actually does. He is very clean, which is awesome. <laughs> Makes me happy. I'm like, oh, he's so wired like me when it comes to that. Um, the transition. So it was at some point, and I can't remember exactly when, you know, my parents made it clear to us that they, their goal was to transition out of the business. And, um, and they saw our roles as, you know, my brother, this role, my brother's more operational. He's our chief experience officer. Um, I am more on the finance and, you know, employee experience, culture, HR, kind of legal, all that running through me. Um, so they made it really clear to us. And um, there was just a lot of shadowing that happened. But I can tell you, I wish that it wouldn't have happened quite as soon as it did. Like I have told other family businesses, um, I think it would have been valuable if we would have had my parents kind of day to day in the business a little bit longer. Um, and I hear from a lot of family businesses of, it was just, it's like the opposite, right? They're like, oh my gosh, I'm like ready for my dad to step out, but he won't. Um, I, I know those kinds of businesses as well, and I'm, I felt like I was a little bit more on the, they were like, oh, you guys are ready. Um, and then looking back, I'm like, oh, I don't know if we were really that ready. Uh, we made it work, but um, I think the timing is really a, a tough one to know. And then the unexpected. We yeah. see that in our world a lot, you know, where yes. somebody's just not there tomorrow, you know, for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and there is some, I'm going to call it lead time to being prepared for that, you know. Um, I'm on the other end of the spectrum from her and that I have a son who's 28 now, finished his JD MBA. And one of the things I was told Preston is you really can't work for us. You know, you need to go learn to be an employee before you learn to be the boss, yep. to, to your comment. But also at the same time, when he was going through undergrad and kind of stuff, put him in specific places where I wanted him to see the things that I thought he would need his mother and I were on some trip like to Europe and we never come back. You know, how would be, how would you prepare? And I think that's the other piece to what she's talking about is thinking, I'm gonna call it years in advance of how you make that work. Because I told Preston, I said, I think you need to go spend three years, five years out working somewhere else and then they can you turn to your comment earlier and come back. Mm -hmm. and, and so for instance, when we rebranded, I let Preston do it. And, and worked through it and worked heavily with Andrea and some of the other people in the firm. The idea being that, you know, to what you want it to look like 10 years, 20 years from now. If I'm not here, what do you want it to look like? You know? mm -hmm. And uh, I think those are important things. Yeah. One more question? Yes. Uh, with, with, with Prestige, you obviously have a largely distributed workforce, some of them are off hours. Yep. So is that challenging to keep sort of a company culture, help your employees feel engaged? What are some of the things that you've done to kind of help them feel like part of the larger team? Yeah, that's really hard. So we have some um, clients where there is one person. It is a one person shift. 
Um, and so that creates such a challenge. We have field managers that oversee typically on average 15 locations. And so sometimes that employee is only seeing that manager once a week. Um, so we have, like we have what we call a shout out program. So it's a bonus program. Our managers, our employees can actually nominate people for it. We, um, we text a lot. And I know that sounds crazy, but it has been a game changer for us because these are these custodians. They're going into a job site at 5 a.m., um, but they all have their phones. And so we will text them things, you know, um, to like shout out things. We do videos. Um, like we'll, we actually did a whole video series on, because for us, when an employee starts, that first, that first week is critical. Like we will lose custodians after one day, right? So we've done all these like video, like this is what to expect in the first week. And so they get it the day before they start. And it's a message, I start the message, you know, like welcoming them. And then we've got like our leadership team that's on it. And so that hopefully they feel some connection, because um, a lot of times they can feel a greater connection to the client than to us. It's, on, it's something that we're striving to like constantly work on. We're super excited this year. We actually have benefits for like all the benefits, all the like tons of benefits, but it includes part-time as well. So really looking at you know, even our benefit offering and how can we make that available to everybody. Um, I've got a great VP of HR. Um, he actually comes from um, one of the largest retail employers in the U.S. and uh, learned a lot from, he's, he's incorporated a lot of great things for us. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, we thank you. you know, uh, thank you so much. <laughs> Ah, oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Well, thank you all for coming today. Uh, hopefully you heard some things that Brenda Bell or uh, David Ventures. Rachel's going to be around a while. Our whole team will be around for a while. Um, our next Aspire event will be in February. Um, we typically take a break during the holidays with all the other things going on. And through January, everybody's kind of back in the swing of the year. So we look forward to seeing you in February. Uh, don't forget, if you want the CPE to turn in that, check on getting your uh, parking validated and stuff on the way out. And again, if we can ever be a resource, we can ever answer a question, you know, I don't care if you're a client or you know, what your status is with us. If we can be a resource or provide you a name of somebody else to do business with or talk to you about whatever your issue is, please use us. That's, that's what we're here for. Okay. Have a great week. Um, I'll try and stay dry tomorrow. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>